the Kia Telluride ranks among our top SUVs that we test at CarGurus because year in and year out, it continues to look great and it feels and drives like a cut above, even in the luxury class. But now there's more competition among mid-sized three-row SUVs. So after five model years without any major changes, how good is it? The Telluride has been Kia's flagship model since it came out for 2020. Nothing has really changed that much within the last five years. Not that it really needs to. It keeps on refining its basic shape and all the amenities and technology inside just keep getting better. Kia refreshed the Telluride for 2023 and with it, they got rid of the amber DRLs that were on the top trims and now it's back on every trim. I really like how these look because you can't find them on most new cars. It's a really unique signature. They're small lights. It's a really handsome front end. The whole car is. That's why it looks good. Kia's doing a lot of crazy, wacky designs. I like that they're taking chances, but the Telluride is gonna look good five years from now and five years later. It's really classic looking. The X-Line also raises ground clearance to 8.4 inches from eight inches on every other Telluride, but it doesn't have the all-terrains, the 18 inches that you'll find on the X-Pro. We've tested that model, so go check out that review. But I think this one definitely looks sleeker, especially on the street. It also has raised roof rails, which the regular Telluride doesn't come standard with. And for 2024, it's got a lot of gloss black trim instead of dark gray. The back of the Telluride might be even classier than the front. These hockey stick lights that go into the tailgate, everything is just simple, it's clean. Again, I keep talking about how crazy Kia gets with all their other SUVs. This one is built to last, and this is why you see them in the wealthy zip codes. It doesn't matter where you are. People like this look, as do I. And if you get the X-Line, you're getting a special treat, rear air springs. What that does, it helps level the back of the truck when you're towing so it's not dipping. That's a nice expensive feature you won't find on the competition. Behind the third row, there's 21 cubic feet of cargo space. Behind the second, 46, and when everything is folded, 87. That's among the top in the segment. Under this cargo tray, there's even more space behind the third row where you can actually put the cargo cover when you're not using it. That's very helpful. This third row is manual. Pop those down, and then there's two power releases here for the captain's chairs. The Telluride comes one way, a 3.8 liter V6 with 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. There's an eight-speed automatic and all-wheel drive is optional on every single trim. Now the fuel economy, because there's no hybrid or plug-in hybrid option, it's not that great. It only cracks 24 MPG on the highway with the all-wheel drive models, which isn't very good by any means. But the towing is 5,000 pounds on most models and if you get the X-Pro, it jumps to 5,500. Black is the elegant choice for the Telluride, but it's not the fanciest. There's five colors in total, a lot of choices, and this is the Napa leather, so it's extra soft. Most of the Telluride's interior is pretty high quality, including these toggle switches, the knurl buttons, and these grab handles on the center console. But the wood, that's really flimsy and fake. Kia could swap that out for something much nicer, like the aluminum style trim around the vents. I just like how it looks in here, and even though all of the materials aren't up to luxury grade, it certainly is constructed nicely. There's plenty of visibility in the Telluride. That's what's so great about it being a traditional SUV boxy design, but not too boxy. It still feels pretty elegant inside here. And also these seats after 30 minutes or 60 minutes, depending on how you set it, will start to massage your lower back. And that's really, really nice. Most Tellurides are seven seats, so you get these captain's chairs. Only the LX and the EX trims have the bench for full eight passenger seating. And when you get the SX Prestige, you're getting heated and cooled back seats here, plenty of legroom, all of this moonroof space that has a power shade accessible from the front, third climate zone, shades, USB ports here. It's a great place to stay. The Telluride shouldn't be your choice for putting adults in the third row, but there's still air vents up here and USB-C ports on either side, so the kids will at least enjoy it. The Telluride now has a curved display. It's still 12.3 inches, still running the same software that I find could be updated. There's newer Hyundai models, for example, that have improved tight faces, better legibility, but as it stands, it's pretty good. Navigation comes standard on every Telluride trim, but wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto do not exist you still need a USB cable. That's a bit annoying for 2024. However, there's lots of safety features and you can go in here and adjust them on the fly. Makes it really easy because all the description is here. That's a nice thing about having a wide screen. Whenever you tap an option or in a menu, you can see what's changing. 
Top trims of the Telluride also come with rear safety, which is emergency braking when you're in reverse. The 360 cameras are another strong point, including this outside the car view. I always like the renderings here. It makes parking so much easier. And also, when you just wanna see where your tires are, including when you go to the front, they also switch and you have extra views that will stay on while you're driving. This is great. There's no excuse to curb a rim, not at all. And if you don't wanna use the touchscreen, you can tap these shortcut buttons right below and there's volume and seat controls. I like that quite a lot. It's very, very helpful to have redundancy, analog redundancy. And the stereo is pretty decent. It's not great. It's a 10 speaker Harman Kardon. It's certainly an upgrade versus the standard car's six speaker unit. The instrument panel, reconfigurable with different layouts. That's fun, as is this. It'll sync with the time and weather, even though it's a day, it is not a beautiful cloudy day. This should be showing raindrops, but it's nice that you can see that. There's no full screen maps, but there's still a lot of information at a glance, simple to use. I do wish though that you would adjust more settings from the steering wheel. Most of it has to be done within the touchscreen itself. That's the sound of an old school V6. Just pure displacement, nothing more. The gearing is what has improved on the Telluride. Not the actual gears, but how the software is changing them. Previous versions, especially when the Telluride first came out, it felt lazier to respond, slower to shift. What they've done, especially on this new one, it's noticeably improved. So without making any mechanical changes, Telluride is driving better than ever. It's certainly a lot better than the similarly sized V6 and nine speed automatic transmission that you'll find in the Honda Pilot. Watch that review. It also drives better than the Subaru Ascent, which is kind of underpowered by comparison. So there's different approaches to putting different size engines in big SUVs like this. And I think with the new programming that Kia has on this eight speed, it's great where it is. Any Telluride trim is gonna ride well. There's no difference between any of them except if you're getting the X-Line models or the X-Pro because it comes with a rear air suspension. It's meant to help level the back of the car when there's load, such as towing. Nice, a lot of times you'll find older wagons like Mercedes that have similar technology. But I do think even without any load in the back, this one's riding a little better than what I remember. And I drove it to Telluride really not all that long ago. It was a 2023 review. But this one, even with these lower profile 20 inch tires, it's feeling like everything is danced really nicely and it goes well with the highway ride. It's pretty quiet. Even if it's raining right now, there's a ton of insulation and all the glass that I don't feel like I have to yell. And that goes for anyone in the back seat. Highway drive assist is only on the top trims of the Telluride, and that will give you more control, such as automatically slowing the car down around curves to match the posted speed limits. It will self-center the car in the lane and also automatically change lanes if you use the turn signal. But it's not a hands-off system like GM Super Cruise, for example. Kia doesn't have anything quite that advanced yet. I'm in the Telluride because there's no paddle shifters and the sport mode really just, well, makes the engine a little bit louder. You don't really want to drive this car all that quickly, but it does respond decently. There's some roll because, yeah, this is a larger SUV than some lower SUVs such as, say, the Sportage or other Kias. The on-center feel in the Telluride, pretty decent. Not as good as what you'll find in Honda or even Chevy on some of their SUVs. But I feel confident enough where I can take the Telluride at a decent enough clip through turns and feel like I know where the wheels are turning. SUVs just keep getting better and better with really just <laughs> more car-like handling. But around these turns, I definitely feel the taller center of gravity so if you want a more sporty experience in an SUV, you're probably gonna have to look elsewhere or go into the luxury segment entirely. That's really the main difference between the Telluride and the luxury models from BMW and Mercedes. 
the luxury models truly will crank it up on a back road and on the highway. That's what you're really paying for. This Telluride only goes so far, but for 90% of what you're gonna do on the road, it's pretty darn good. There's some roll because, yeah, this is a larger SUV than some lower SUVs such as, say, the Sportage or other Kias. Braking, though, is a strong point because the pedal feel, it's kind of on the medium side. Some of those other cars can be kind of squishy, so they did a pretty good job here. The 2024 Kia Telluride starts at 36,190. There are 10 trims. Mine is the SX Prestige X-Line, $54,770 as tested with destination. There are so many competitors. The Toyota Highlander, Nissan Pathfinder, Ford Explorer, and about a dozen more. After five model years, the Kia Telluride is still a leader in this segment because it's delivering all the quality that elevates this car to a higher status. And because of that, you're not getting one at a discount. Kia at this price, no longer the discount choice. And even though some competitors are offering better fuel efficiency and newer powertrains, this Telluride is still a real, real favorite of ours. What do you think? Go to cargurus.com and watch our other Telluride reviews. We've got a lot of them. So subscribe and we'll see you next time.